Hi YouTube, uh, I'm gonna talk about more whiskeys today. Um, don't be scared, this is not becoming a, another whiskey channel. There's tons and tons of those already. And uh, I, I really stick, wanna stick to my usual thing of, of covering things that otherwise don't get a lot of notice. Um, that, that can include whiskey sometimes though, so uh, um, in, including American whiskeys. Um, I, was, I really had my interest in the category revived by that, uh, that Laird's single cask I did last year, and since then uh, I've just been trying a whole bunch of them. And in particular, I grabbed a whole bunch of um, sort of holiday sample boxes um, that looked interesting because I love sample boxes. And I've been slowly working through them. Um, trying to find some uh, some gems. So today we're going to be doing Journeyman Distillery again um, in Three Oaks, Mis Mis Michigan. Oh, I, I can't pronounce that things today. Uh, I previously reviewed their uh, Rhodes End Rum, Navy Strength, not really Navy Strength, but, but you know that's a longer story. Um, and I rather thought this was a good value. This is about forty bucks. Um, not bad stuff at all. Um, these are more expensive, actually, if you for full bottles at least. Um, the the three whiskeys in the pack were uh, uh, should be about forty five, well, 40, between forty and fifty, um, depending on where you are. And uh, this big guy, the 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 Corsus Whips and Whiskey, their wheat whiskey, um, which seemed to have won some kind of big award from Kevin Minnick or something, um, should be around sixty plus, depending on where you are. Um, so these are actually pricier than the rum is, even though the rum is, is 57% alcohol. Um, all right, so I thought we would go through these and uh, taste through them, add some water, taste through them again, and I give them a score. I'm trying to, I had a, I'm having a hell of a time setting these things up straight for the camera, so I hope this looks good. Um, or as, as good as you need for these videos, right? I mean... It's, it's, it's coming to my notice that people are actually just listening to these things and not actually watching me um, awkwardly pour things, which makes a kind of sense, right? So I'm going to try to be better about specifying which, which of these I'm talking about at any given time. And here we go with the corsets. Okay, I've talked about Journeyman a little bit before. Um, basically, it's, it's kind of a an offshoot of Caval in Chicago. Um, I did a bunch of Caval's whiskeys before. Um, I have, I have been a fan and a little bit of a critic for a long time. Um, so basically the folks who founded this worked at Caval for, uh, I think a couple of years. They did the first distillation of, uh, the earliest whiskeys at, at Caval. Um, and there's a lot of other little similarities too, like, uh, um, We'll, we'll, we'll get to those as, as they come up. Uh, happily, the, the journeyman folks like to bottle at higher strength. They like uh, they seem to like 45 um, and, and also cast strength offerings. So that's, that's good. Koval still hasn't learned that. Um, uh, they also like golf. Um, they have a putting green, which, you know, I'm, I kind of hate golf. I have moral objections to it. But, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to try to be an objective reviewer here. Um, and what is fun to me is they have unusual mash bills, um, and we will get to these as we work through. So we got a we got a bourbon. Uh, this is the uh, Featherbone Bourbon, forty five percent alcohol. This is batch one sixty eight. If you're curious, we have got their last Feather Rye, originally Ravenswood Rye, before the winery Ravenswood out in California sued them and they had to change the name. This is uh, also forty five percent alcohol, batch one twenty three. Um, Silver Cross whiskey, one percent of which goes to uh, basically uh, golf charities. Um, batch uh, one eighteen. This is uh, this is an interesting one, um, and uh, we got the Corsets Whips and Whiskey, which is a wheat, one hundred percent wheat whiskey, cast strength. This is a single uh, cask pick by Binnie's here in Chicago. Uh, I should note that none of these are, are noted as straight. So I have every reason to believe that they are less than two years old. I, I think, except for, with the exception of the cast pick, these are all blends of different barrel sizes. But you know, again, if it doesn't say straight, you know, assume that the lowest or the youngest whiskey in there is um, is under two. All right, so let's get this started. Enough of my rambling. Um, uh, On to the journeyman, uh, Featherbone Bourbon. So this is 
Um, the mash bill in this is fun. It is 70% corn, 25% wheat, so it is a weeder, but it's also a ryer, 5% uh, rye. So it's a, th a so you got both wheat and rye, but it's not a four grain because there's no barley in this. There is no malted barley in this bourbon. And I don't, with the exception of Caval's uh, bourbon, which I believe is just corn and millet, um, this is the first bourbon I've, I recall trying with no malted barley, sort of providing a little bit of a fruity backbone. Um, all right, so here we go um, on the nose. Okay, so the top note for all of Journeyman's whiskeys so far as I've tried so far is is kind of the same top note as Caval, which makes me think, you know, are they using the same yeasts? Are these the same stills? I know Caval's have helped uh, set up the stills. Oh, incidentally, all of these are, are kosher and organic too, which is cool. Um, yes, yeah, so I got that same top note of like a, I'm trying to tr try to figure out how to articulate it. It's something like a mix between like being in a bakery early in the morning. So like rising bread dough, very yeasty, you know, dough. Um, but at the same time, like fresh plastic, like you just took a, took a, you know, an action figure out of the box and you're like smelling it. Uh, it's, it's some kind of mingling between those two smells. Um, beyond that, you've got a, a very nice sort of mint tea component, but also like a, something else, other kinds of tea in there too, um, like a Ceylon tea, like a simple black tea. Um, the wheat is coming through nicely. There's some, um, uh, some like Triscuits, but maybe you toasted up your Triscuits a little bit. Um, more fre fresh mint, some white pepper in there. A little, I can't even really say the cherry and the, well, like a, there's like a, there's like a nod towards cherry and vanilla, but that's not really very dominant. It's not out front. There's some like a, a cough, a nutty coffee thing, like, um, like a hazelnut coffee, but maybe it's not like all... You know, so obnoxious in hazelnutty. Maybe you cut the hazelnut coffee in with some regular coffee, that kind of thing. I mean, it smells. It smells. You know, a little, a little basic. Um, it's. It's. There's. There's some nice flavors going on. It just ha doesn't have a lot of depth to it. A um, little simple. A little young. Not rough. Just. Just. It more. More emphasizing the simple aspect of it on the young part than the, than any roughness. Um, on the palate. For the uh, the the bourbon, continuity with the nose, really. Um, so you're kind of getting that plasticky, yeasty, bready note again. But beyond that, you're getting okay. So sweet tea, um, sweet tea that's been stewing a long, long time. So you're getting some tan wood tannins in there. Um, but you, you also threw some mint into your into your sweet tea. So there's a lot of um, like a like a fresh kind of stewed mint tea kind of thing note in there as well. Um, kind of a dark chocolate mixed in with something wheat like like take take okay. Take frosted mini wheats and then like cover them in dark chocolate and kind of make a dessert out of that. That's kind of what this tastes like. Um, kind of that yeasty note there's, is, is, is really present. Um, slightly floral, um, but like floral, hmm. I mean, take, take a, like a, for some reason my mind goes to like an, an oatmeal stout. There's a little bit of an oatmeal stout character to this. Take an oatmeal stout and then just plop some wildflowers in there. That's kind of what this tastes like. Um, that hazelnut coffee note is, is still there. Okay, the finish, it's all in the front of my mouth. It's, this is very young. Um, the tannins are mostly that sort of floral note, a little bit of weedy mintiness, but it's mostly wood tannins. Um, it's fine. Um, you know, I will give this a squirt of water. Where's my squirter? There it is. My my initial impression of this is that, you know, it's it's perfectly pleasant. It's a little basic. You know, this if, if this was 
a car, it would be like a Nissan Rogue or something. Nothing wrong with a Nissan Rogue. Good, capable car, even has some neat eccentricities to it. It looks kind of funky. But, you know, it's a little basic. And you have to keep in mind the price points on these are all, for a full bottle, it's 45 bucks, right? Which is actually higher than Cobalt, which is weird. Um, all right, moving on to the rye. So this is the uh, Last Feather Rye, formerly known as the, uh, the Ravenswood again, before they got sued. And uh, the mash bill on this is even more fun. Uh, this is 60% uh, rye. No corn, though. The rest is all wheat. It's 40% wheat. Um, I have, so it's, it's a rye without corn, without barley. Um, it's just rye and wheat, um, which is kind of cool. Again, 45% ABV by volume. No indication of straightness, so no, you know, presumably under two years old. Much more unusual um, than the bourbon. Um, it still has that that sort of same bready, plasticky coval note, but not as much. It's it's much more on. What is that? Um, it smells like like sort of dry, loose dirt or something. What is that? It reminds me of something. I mean, this really smells like an ant farm, to be honest. Um, I know that's an, that's an odd tasting note, but that's kind of where my mind is going. It's it smells like you know you're 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 nine years old. You've got your ant farm, and you just open up the top to, to smell it a little bit. But then on top of that, you're going to add some some a little bit of um like shredded wheat, maybe some some mint sprigs. Um, it's also very floral. They um uh, there's a there's a mix of, of uh, like wildflowers again, but also a like a like a laundry sheet, like a dryer sheet thing. But but I'm not annoyed by it in the same way that I was with the um, with the Smith and Cross rum that one time. This is a nice uh, dryer sheet, if that makes sense. Um, very dusty. Um, some, some 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 light black tea notes again, like Ceylon, something like that, coming from the oak. Um, it's an unusual nose, and I'm, I'm still going with Ant Farm as, as the dominant note. Um, on the palate, hmm. Interesting. Comes off as actually sweeter than the bourbon does. Um, oh, okay. That's a funky finish. Um, not funky in like the, the rum sense, just funky as in interesting. Um, okay, so we're leading on like marzipan, candied nuts, uh, honey, like a, like a wildflower honey thing. Um, some kind of cherry note again. Mm -hmm. Okay, chocolate covered cherries, dark chocolate. Um, there's a tea note in this, which is actually more prominent than in the bourbon. So you're getting stewed black tea. A um, little bit of that sort of wildflowers thing, like the like wildflowers with whole grain. So you take some wildflowers and you're gonna dump some some like whole grain flour on top of them. Like, you know, is any of this making sense? I, I feel like my tasting notes are going off the rails. Um, yeah, flowers, whole grain flour, different spelling of flour, obviously. Um, Black tea, lots of wood tannins on the finish. It goes back, finishes a little bit further back in my mouth than the, than the bourbon, but still very upfront, very young. Mostly again on, on the wood tannins. Um, I mean, this is tricky to, okay, I'm gonna give this a squirt of water before we move on, before I forget. It's tricky to describe this because so on the one hand, the, the, the flavors going on are very interesting and very unique. I don't think I've, I've encountered something that works quite like this. Um, because it's, I, I've had rye and wheat together, obviously, but not with any, with, with no, you know, corn or anything else to balance them out. And um, it's an interesting, it's a very interesting set of flavors happening and very unique set of flavors, 
but it's still very simple, if that makes sense. Like, um, once you get over that sort of initial uh, recognition that this is something new, you're, you're kind of start looking deeper and there's not a whole lot going on. But, but then again, I mean, I've just added water to it, so maybe it'll, it'll open up. Um, all right, moving on to the Silver Cross. Okay, this is a fun uh, mash bill yet again. So for 45% uh, alcohol on the Silver Cross here. This is a four grain. Um, this is 25% corn, rye, wheat, barley each. Um, so they've, uh, yeah, so tw four, four grains, but, but not any one dominating. It's all a quarter each um, in the mash bill. Um, ooh, that's a fun nose. By far the biggest nose um, of the bunch so far. That is, that's, okay, so for, the first thing I'm going to say is I, f I feel like it's really the, the barley, the malted barley, doing the heavy lifting here. This is very fruity and weird and fun. Um, so we're getting sort of Lipton's tea. Um, but it's really dominated by cough drops, like, um, like throat lozenges, um, uh, which is kind of great. There's some leafiness, like an autumn leaves kind of thing, like a dried leaves. White pepper. Uh, that, that, that Koval note, the, um, the bready plastic thing, that's still there, but it's, it's much more dominated by the, the fruity uh, uh, cough drop throat lozenge thing. Um, this is actually a pretty good nose. Uh, getting more coffee, like flavored coffee, more like walnut coffee than, um, than hazelnut this time. That dryer sheet note again, kind of a mix of floral and herbalness, herbal, herbal, herbaceousness. Um, and just kind of a, like a grainy flower kind of note, like you took some bunch of whole grain flowers, like you took your wheat flour and your rye flour, and you sort of threw them all up in the air and went huzzah, and um, now you're sort of smelling the big mess. It's lovely. I really like this nose. Uh, let's see if the palate delivers. Hmm. Ah, argh. still not that complex, but uh, I mean, it's lovely. Very soft. Um, oh, it is nice. Uh, very candied. Um, Carrying on from the nose, uh, mostly, sort of, so we're getting cough drops, you know, this will clear out your, your sinuses if, you're, if you got a cold. Um, that leafy, the, the dried leaf, autumn leaves kind of note, the um, flowers, stewed tea, kind of mint leaves, nutty coffee. Um, It's candied but herbal at the same time. There's a grassiness, a mintiness. Um, there's a little bit of fennel coming out. Ref quite refreshing, actually. Oh, I re mm. okay. This is winning me over a little bit. All right. This, I am talking about the Silver Cross. If if you're listening to this in the audio and, and have lost track. Yeah. Okay. Um, Um, nice. To my mind, the best of the three so far. This is winning it. Um, uh, herbal, uh, grainy, um, has a little bit of a, like a chalky element. Like you, um, you kind of, you kind of, uh, inhaled some chalk dust or something. A little bit of that. Um, but the, the sort of throat... It's, but the throat lozenge, but delicious thing is really driving this. And it, I find it very intriguing. Um, so I'm going to give this a squirt of water and we'll come back to it in a little bit. Nice. All right. And that's the one I was rooting against though, right? Because it's the one closest to golf. Um, okay. We're, we're moving on to the corsets, whips, and whiskey. 
100% uh, whis wheat whiskey cast strength. Now this one, it has a whole bunch of information on the side there. Um, oh, if you're curious, the batch here is PB102. Um, all right, and this is uh, Binny's selection one of four from warehouse one, two, first floor, barrel 112, barrel size 15, which I imagine means this is a 15 gallon barrel. Uh, volume number seven, I don't know what that means. I imagine that is, is, is this like a book series or what does volume seven mean? Anyways, um, date barreled, uh, 625, 2017. Um, so, uh, but it's, it's been a good long time in a small barrel. If, I mean, look at that color, Jesus. All right. This is going to have a lot of oak on it. Let's get going. Um, hundred percent weak wheat and it is. 62.5% alcohol. All right, on the nose of the corsets, whips, and wicks whiskey. So this is, I mean, I'm getting a lot of these names from the old the factory they're in, the old uh, uh, Featherbone factory in their town. Apparently they made, they made, you know, stuff like corsets and whips. So why not? Tons of, of wood. Um, Tons of, I mean, rah, oak. Um, it does have that that Caval fermenting, bready, plasticky thing, but I mean, it's just so dominated by the oak here. So you're getting, so you're getting sweet, southern sweet tea, again, um, some kirsch, uh, that the sort of you know cherry note, but sort of you know spirity cherry. Vanilla essence, more tea. Um, there's a little bit of the of the of the of the wheat distillate coming through, but not a whole lot. This is really the oak running the show. So I'm getting a little bit of sort of frosted mini wheats in there. Some white pepper. Um, not really a lot of a lot of minty notes, which is what I expect in a wheat in a very heavily weeded whiskey. It's just all smothered in the oak. Which is kind of nice. I'm kind of I'm kind of enjoying it. Um, it's like a dusty. I don't want to say dusty attic because that's because I've been using that too often, and it's it really smells more like a like a dusty Victorian living room. Um, you know, it's like like a like a old furniture and leather and a fireplace with a roaring blaze going on. Um, and there's some fresh leather going on there too. Um, very, very oaky. I mean, the, the, the oak is just, you know, screaming at me out of the glass. Um, on the palate, all right, so I will be careful because 62.5% alcohol. All right, here we go. Oh, it's not the alcohol that's getting me when, when I make that sort of a ooh face. It's, it's the, it, it's the oak tannins, which are ripping my, my, t my tongue apart and just ripping, they're just ripping down my tongue. Um, over stewed tea, over stewed sweet tea. Like, um, I know I've used that note a lot, but it's a very common note in journeyman apparently. Um, yeah, I am eating an action figure. There's a lot of plastic, tons of, of cherry again. That's the wood. That's wood. I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Cherry wood all day long. But also like a couple real cher cherries, like wild cherries in there. A little kirsch again. Just tons of different cherry elements going on. Um, that cro frosted mini weeds element coming, uh, coming in again. Um, the finish, okay, so I'm going to back up a little bit here because it may sound like I'm being negative on this. This is not like, you know, back in the early days of craft bourbons and stuff where you would get something that was just like oak and sort of rough, hot spirit. This is not that. This is, there's tons and tons of oak on this, but, you know, it's holding itself together. This is not... Um, you know, 
just rough and a mess. This is just a very, very oaky take on, on wheat whiskey. Um, there is, I was wondering where the mint was. It's there on the finish. It's, um, but it's not like a mint sprigs or fresh mint or anything like that. It's more like, um, what is that? It's like artificial. It's like, uh, on the finish, well, obviously you're getting lots of tannins, lots of wood tannins. There's like a green Tic Tac note. Um, was that the spear, the, the spearmint one? Whatever. It was the green Tic Tac. Um, but there's, there's another, like, now I'm thinking about Tic Tacs. Um, there's also a, um, like a red, no, no, no the, the red Tic Tacs were fruity ones. There was something else that was very Tic Tac-y and red though, and had like cinnamon and hot and like pepperiness. Was, was, was it Red Hots or was that something else? Anyways, I'm getting the sort of sp cinnamon spicy uh, Tic Tac things in there along with the green Tic Tacs on the finish and along with the, I mean, just, just tree bark, um, but nice, you know, pleasant if, you, if you're into that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Ooh, campfire ash. Lots of vanilla, sort of vanilla bean this time. Um, some cinnamon toast crunch in there. I mean, this is, I will be honest and say this is not my my style of whiskey. This is way too uh, heavy on the fresh wood, but um, I, I am enjoying it regardless. And I think the quality is, is generally pretty high. Um, let's add some water to this and see how it develops over time though. All right, couple squirts, one, two, three, four. Let's see what four did. Mm. Oh. You could, look, one more squirt. You can always add more. You can't take it out once it's there. All right, let's go through these one more time and um, see where they've gone and give them a score. All right, um, back to the feather bone bourbon. Um, so it's become more kind of grainy and um, peppery. There's a little bit of a pear note coming out now, which is pretty nice. But a lot of the um, uh, the other fruitier notes and the the, the tea notes in a, in particular have kind of receded. The wood sugar is coming out a little bit. It's, it actually quiets down um, from what I remember it being. Yeah, so it's 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 grains. It's you know graininess that the um white pepper notes that pear thing a, a little uh, you know kind of just twigs like not, not like burned tw twigs like leftovers from a campfire and you know a little bit of oak i mean yeah okay i had you know it's not really it's not really bringing a lot with the squirt of water in it let's see what it does on the on the palate Okay, so the bourbon was actually the driest of this bunch, in my judgment, before I added water. This is this is um, brought up with the wood sugars a little bit. It also brings out the, um, uh, the, the, the tannins a little bit more. This is now extending the finish further back into my mouth, which is nice, but otherwise it's just, it's actually kind of simplified the, fl the flavor prof profile by a lot. Um, It's nice. Um, I would drink this if it was served. Okay, so the, the problem here is the price. Because in my judgment, this is like a perfect, you know, a, a textbook 80-point whiskey. A spirit, actually, or in general. Um, it's, not knocking, it's not knocking my socks off, but I would not, you know, turn it down if it was served to me. Um, it's pleasant. It's nice. At $45, ugh, I mean, we're starting to get into, into you know, dangerous territory with this. Let me try it one more time. Yeah, it's an 80. This is a classic 80. Um, 
and that's fine. That's not a bad place to be. I think I think the price point is a bad place to be. But moving on, we're gonna try our the uh, the feather the um, uh, last feather rye one more time on the on the nose. Okay, so the drier note thing has disappeared. The flowers have really come out to play. Um, so yeah, now it really just smells like ant ant farm with a bunch of like nice with like a nice flower garden growing out of it. Um, and it, it's it's pleasant, but it's again the, the the water actually seems to have simplified the spirit, which is not where I want my spirits to go when I when I give them time and water, on the palate. Mm. Okay. Um, all right. Before this, this actually came across as one of the sweeter options of this bunch. The sweetness has actually gone away. We brought out the rye, the the, the rye spiciness, the rye slight vegetal nature. Uh, of this. There's a little bit of a sort of burned Brussels sprout thing going on now, which I like. It's also brought out the wood um, and the sort of wood tannin aggression, which I don't like. And um, there's, there's some more kind of nutty coffee things going on. Oh, wait, that was the wrong one. Oh, try the bourbon again. All right, back to the rye. Yeah, tones down the sweetness, brings out the graininess, and the rye in particular. But overall, kind of simplifies it a little bit. Kind of, kind of pulls it back. Um, yeah, I would, I would give this the same score. I would give this an eighty-two. It's pleasant. It's, it's especially with water. It's dry and it's interesting. It's new. Like you have not had a rye that tastes like this because again, no corn. Um, no barley, it's just rye and wheat. Um, but you know, there's not a whole lot of depth there. And uh, let me try one more time. Eighty textbook eighty. Um, that's fine. But again, price point is a little bit um, ambitious. All right. Um, Silver Cross again. I think this was of of these three. This was my favorite, uh, so let's see what it did with some water. All right, let's see if we've got a winner here. Okay, um, this actually brings out the cough droppy action uh, going on from earlier a little bit more, which I, which just makes me really, I really enjoy that sort of fruity cough droppy kind of thing. There's some more autumn leaves going on. There's some... More, a little bit more herbaceousness too. This is this nose is actually perked up a little. Um, there's some fennel. There's uh, there's kind of like a like a pep like a like a jalapeno like a dry jalapeno pepper kind of note going on here too. Um, it's nice. It, it's I wouldn't say it's immensely more complicated than before, but it's it hasn't like, you know, actually pulled back like the like the previous two has. All right, on the palate. Mm. Ah, damn it! All right, now on on the palate, this actually pulls back like the others. Um. It kind of collapses a little bit. Uh, it's nice. It's 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 kind of has this kind of grainy, ashy thing um, going on, which is uh, pleasant. It, the cough drop thing is is still there. Um, wood tannins come out a little bit more again. Remain, re, remains just about the same level of sweetness as before. Um, still my favorite of the bunch. Well, what do I do with this? 
All right, so before I added water, I had this at around an 82 or something, you know, nice, well-made, you know, bordering on good. Um, with water, I think this pulls back to more like the 80s that these guys are at. Um, so let's call, let's call this an 81. No, let's call this an 81 plus. Um, it, it deserves that. Let me try it one more time. Mm-hmm. What this does is it gets me interested in um, uh, the malt whiskey options um, from Journeyman because I, I get the sense from this that they, they probably do malt, malted barley very well. Now, the thing is they do have a, a, a malted, uh, a single malt out there. It's called Three Oaks uh, and I can't find it anywhere. And the other thing about it is it's gone through a very uh, ornate and Baroque aging process which uh, finishes off with, with port, and God, I am so done with port finishes. Not everything needs to be Angel's Envy, people. Like, get, st put down the port barrel, leave it alone. Um, but any, let, me, let me go back to my point. I think, I think they, they do have a strength in, in malt, and I, I would love to see them release, say, a straight malt whiskey, something like that. Um, uh, maybe throwing some other grains in there for, for character. Um, yeah, no, so, and I'll, I'll see if I can hunt down the Three Oaks uh, in the future. All right, moving on to the uh, the Corsets, Whips, and Whiskey, big cast strength monster. Okay, here we go. This should be winning, right? Because it's the, the most expensive, it's, it's the store pick. Um, okay, this is now turned into like vanilla essence. Um, it becomes even woodier. Yeah, okay. Now, there's a little mint coming out on the nose now. So, wood es you know, vanilla essence, tree bark, and mint on the nose. Um, some root beer. A little hint of Armagnac in there, too. Like, um, old Armagnac. It's very... It's much more... comes across as much more hot and much more cinnamon-driven now. So, the... Um, what are those? The red hots, whatever they're called, are, are are coming up on the nose now. I mean, it's it's a dense, dominant woodiness, um, and that's and I, that a lot of people are going to like this style. Um, I, I I I can see I can tell you that right now. It's not really my thing, um, but. This is well done. It definitely has an appeal um, on the palate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. It doesn't really develop a whole lot. Sweetens up. Um, none of these really develop a whole lot. So you got more, more, more wood sugar, more wood in general coming out. A little more plastic coming out too. Um, let me try this one more time. The reason I looked over here is because, okay. So, hold on, maybe I can reach this. Um, I think this is irrelevant. I just had this lying around. Um, this is a relevant comparison. Oh, there's some, like some, some wheat almost like a wheat ash thing going on. Like you just set some some fresh winter wheat on fire. A little kind of a certain leafiness co coming through. Not not like dried leaves. This is fresh leaves. Um, yeah, very, very driven by, by fresh wood. Um, and I like it. I like, I like the style. I would get, so I would, the reason I, I reached over to this is because this is also a wheat whiskey. And I would actually give, I gave this an 83 plus. I would give this the same, this is also an 83 plus. I mean, objectively speaking, I would not split these up based on you know the objective quality. The problem is this little guy, the um, the dry fly, uh, cast strength straight wheat, wheat whiskey, um, which I reviewed. When, I'll link it up below um, whenever I reviewed it. Um, this is um, less expensive. This is about ten bucks less. Um, it's aged in like normal barrel sizes as opposed to like fifteen gallon barrels. Um, it is, uh, you know, marked as straight, so I know it's actually, you know, over two years old. Um, and in general, it's it's just, 
this is a lighter, fresher style that I find um, that I personally prefer a little bit more. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't give diff, make these differ in scores at all, but um, yeah, this is, if, if I were in the store, this would be the one I would, the, the, the dry fly is the one I would be going for. Um, that being said, I know plenty of folks who would prefer this. So let me try this one more time. Yeah. Um, good, well-made wood monster. Um, and that's fine. It's a style. Um, 83 plus. That being said, I will. Like, I, give, I, gave, I also give the same score to this um, <laughs> this rum they made. I think this might actually be the best value in their range. Um, so, oh, how can I sum this up? Uh, yeah, promise. So it sounds like I'm, I'm trashing them a little bit, but I, that's not my intention. I want to sort of. I, I, in some ways, I feel like this selection doesn't necessarily play to their strengths. I think what probably plays more to their strengths is first of all malt. I really want to hunt down, you know, any any malt malt whiskeys they made because this is this silver cross the the malty character of this excites me a lot. Um and also rum. Like uh um I think I think they put together a pretty pretty damn solid rum. So um those are really the, the sides of, of the uh the distillery I'm more interested in rather than the sort of bourbon rye even the very woody wheat whiskey aspect of it. Um, I would love to try more malty stuff and more rummy stuff from them. Um, and I guess that's kind of all I got. Um, not a bad showing. So we got 80 for the bourbon, 80 for the rye, 81, 81 plus, I, I think I said, for the uh, the Silver Cross whiskey. And 83 plus for the uh, corset whips and whis whiskey, wheat whiskey thing. Um, yeah, fine. Grab them if you, if you want them. Um, thanks for watching and, uh, cheers.